So we got to bring on Ann Coulter because she's she's got her new book, uh, Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. It is out now. Anne has been on the bestseller list, the New York Times bestseller list, so many times I've lost count. You know, because when she first came out, she was such a rock star and so beautiful, and she did the dresses and the short dresses and all that stuff. People didn't notice what a terrific writer and researcher she is. I was living in England when she first became famous, and I was going like, wow, you know, this woman is really something, because she she's not doesn't just look like that, which is spectacular. She still looks spectacular, but she also has got the substance, and she really is a good observer of the political scene. Plus, she has got a mouth on her that is like nothing else. And in, the other thing, I always, I'm always afraid I'm going to ruin her career by pointing out that in person, she is one of the sweetest people I have ever met. I'm absolutely crazy about her. So here's Ann Coulter talking about her new book, Resistance is Futile. Ann, it's so nice to hear your voice. How are you doing? Great to talk to you, Andrew Clavin. So your new book, Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. I have to ask you now, you were one of the first early Trump subscribers. I remember you getting mocked on the Bill Maher show for saying he was going to win. Where do you stand on Trump now? How is he doing? <laughs> well, you'll notice the, the cleverness of my book is... I don't have to say much about Trump himself. <laughs> it's about the opposition to him. Because I started noticing, I, I mean, for those of you who follow me assiduously on Twitter, know that I'm a little upset with the man um, for not keeping his promises. I mean, this, it really was like a miracle candidacy. Um, no, he was never what I had in mind as, as presidential material, but he was the only one who was saying all of the things that none of the rest of them would say on trade, on immigration, on um, defending our borders and not other borders. Well, he hasn't really done any of that. And then you have this lunatic opposition to him, and they don't notice the huge huge errors he is making that could drive his base away from him. No, no, no. They have to create some crazy Russian conspiracy. This, <laughs> this demented loser who's lying about his, his taxes and, and is going around um, assaulting women also managed to engage in a vast international conspiracy with our geopolitical enemy, Russia, to steal the election from the most qualified woman ever to run for that office. So the book, luckily for me, <laughs> I don't really have to say anything nice about Trump. Um, and in fact, I mean, the one, the one hopeful note I ended on, um, which the, the very last sentence, I'll give you um, a little secret. I only threw in the very last sentence of the entire book because I thought, eh, this is kind of harsh on Trump. <laughs> and, and some people are are getting are getting annoyed with me for for ragging him on on Twitter, including him himself. Um, but screw him, build the wall if he wants me to stop. Um, but the final chapter is, you know, maybe the only thing we'll ever get out of this guy is he'll destroy the media, which would by which I mean the existing mainstream media. We can build a new bit media on more ethical lines. Um, because that is what the whole, the whole, the first 200 pages of the book attacks. The media is just completely out of control with Trump. They have lost their minds, and they're not, they're not hurting Trump. They're helping him. Um, they're not, and they're certainly not helping the country. Well, now let me ask you that. I mean, the book is called "Resistance Is Futile." Is it futile? I mean, the, the polls are kind of showing that people want the Democrats to take back uh, Congress. Do you disbelieve that? Um, I think Republicans are working so hard to ensure there is a blue wave. <laughs> they may overcome the good efforts of, of the insane media. I mean, their base is white hot. The odds are, historically, there ought to be a blue wave. Democrats should have a really big year. Um, and is our base excited? Well, there's no wall. Um, and, and just a couple of days ago, the Washington Post ran a big article talking to various Republican senators who... <laughs> Don't even have the decency to lie to the voters. <laughs> You're up for election, and you come out, what, a few weeks before the most important midterm election in a very long time, and, uh, yeah, we're never giving you a wall. <laughs> John Cornyn, John Cornyn, I mean, who is advising them, Andrew? Who, whoever their advisors are, yep, yep, we've checked with the American people. They have no interest in a wall. It's really going to help you. I just, I don't even know if they're corrupt or stupid. 
at least cynically lie to us and, and pretend we're getting a wall after the midterm elections. And now with this Kavanaugh business. Well, since that was such a big issue, what's stopping them? I seriously, <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> I figured the one thing we were going to get out, well, I say one thing and destroy the media, maybe the only thing now, but, but on... Um, one of the things I loved about the Trump campaign was he really exposed my party, the Republican Party. I, I knew the Democrats didn't particularly care for Americans. Um, <laughs> but, it, I mean, the hatred for Trump, instead of other Republican candidates grabbing onto his issues, um, that, that, that night on Bill Maher where I said Trump was the most likely to win the nomination, he was just asking about the nomination then, that was two days after what I – fondly call the Mexican rapist speech. Trump wasn't even my candidate then. The rest of the tape, the, the, I follow up by saying, he's not my candidate. I'm still hoping for um, a Romney Scott Walker ticket. Um, because they're like, you know, serious individuals. <laughs> they're, they, they have the background in politics, the sort of thing you, you want from a presidential candidate. Why didn't candidates like, like them grab Trump's issues? Wow, this is popular. Americans are willing to put up with a complete lunatic if he will just build a wall, deport illegals, um, end the job-killing trade deals for once. Do something for the flyover people. Do something for the working class. I'm not working class. This isn't self-interested. But no, no, no. Republicans check with their, their consultants, and the consultants check with the donors. And no, what the American people want is more cheap labor. <laughs> What, all right, so let's let, let us talk about uh, Brett Kavanaugh. This is I, I'm finding this kind of disgusting. It reminds me of Vince Foster's suicide note. Remember where he said that destroying people in Washington is a sport. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what, what, first of all, what do you think? Where do you think this is going? I want them to vote today. This is so outrageous. I knew they were going to do this. Um, I, I I'm just I'm 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 furious about this. I knew this would come up. You had pr probably um, every I was in college and law school about the same time as Brett Kavanaugh. Um, I no, this didn't happen. This absolutely didn't happen. One girl who says I was her um, Ramirez is the woman's um, best friend in law school. If this had happened, I would have known about it. Um, and no, this didn't happen. And that woman gives her name, as did five other close friends of of both of them in that dorm room. They give their names and say, absolutely, this never happened. So, so it's a hit um, job, but will the Republicans cave? I'm terrified they will. A piece like this would never have been run against anyone else. Yes. That's, I mean, that's not Ronan Farrow's fault. It's the New Yorker's fault. You can't imagine a piece like this. You don't have one person substantiating it, which actually kind of surprises me, because I think probably 99% of the female graduates from Yale or Yale Law School um, attended pussy hat marches. Um, that you can't get five of them together to to lie about Kavanaugh to save abortion, um, but, but I, I mean one thing it's worth mentioning. I checked to make sure I was my recollection was right about this. I looked it up on Nexus. Kavanaugh was one of Ken Starr's lead prosecutors. Right. Um, for those of us who lived through it, Bill Clinton, James Carville, Larry Flint. Harvey Weinstein had a book um, that, that did nothing but slant, look into the personal lives of, of stars, prosecutors, and people like me. I got the book killed. Um, it was called Insane Clown Posse. There was massive investigation. That was Bill Clinton's approach. Attack the people who are investigating me. And they couldn't find uh, – Kavanaugh's name was all over the news back then. Um, that's what I checked on Nexus to make sure it wasn't just something I happened to know from, like, Washington gossip. Oh, no, 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 no. It was all over the news. Brett Kavanaugh, Brett Kavanaugh, Brett Kavanaugh. And the Clinton attack machine couldn't find this woman, Ramirez. When he was one of the lead prosecutors on an investigation that led to the impeachment of Bill Clinton for whipping out his penis in front of female underlings. What, what do you think? What do you think of the this entire kind of Me Too thing where something you did 35 years ago comes back and bites you? Do you have sympathy for the Me Too people or is it all just a kind of political scam? Well, it's a mixed bag. Some of them, I think, are great. Some of them are. Um, I mean, you know, you notice it's 
I, I, I'm not sure I'd call this Me Too. This is this is borking we're seeing right now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But most of the ones that have been described as Me Too, it was all 100% liberal sexual predators who had been protected for 20 years. Why? Because Hillary Clinton was running for president and they needed to defend Bill Clinton hmm. and, and Teddy Kennedy. And suddenly, suddenly, there are, you know, the dam breaks. Okay, now you can go after friends of Bill and Hillary Clinton. And so the first, the first batch of them, oh my gosh, all liberal men, you couldn't have gotten away with any of that, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> if only, if only I could have. You know, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you've talked a lot about, you, when you're talking about the media, and I, I agree with you, I think the media is one of the biggest problems we have in the country. I'm a, a absolute, uh, an absolutist when it comes to the First Amendment, but they are so corrupt, they need to reform themselves or be beaten into reforming. What what are the big lies? I'm running out of time, but can you give me a list of the big lies that they have been selling about Donald Trump that you, as no great friend of Trump's, uh, that you feel are just real big lie stuff? Um, well, I'll do them roughly in order. One was the Access Hollywood tape. It's a sexual assault. It's a sexual assault. He said they let you do it. Mm -hmm. it was, that, that The Access Hollywood tape is the perfect encapsulation of what they do. They had a tape with, with Trump sounding like a complete idiot and a boor. But they can't just leave it at that. <laughs> no, no, no. We have to leap to. It's a criminal offense. <laughs> and they were so... They, they, the, the titanic overreaction to the Access Hollywood tape... Um, I think the, the public had the same reaction I'm having right now to the false claim, false claim in the case of Kavanaugh. Maybe it's unfair to compare them, but the false claim against claims against Kavanaugh, it's, people end up being more outraged by the deliverer of the news. Um, also, of course, the Access Hollywood tape, the release of that, the husbanding of it and recording of it, that is not <laughs> illegal, very, very illegal. Um, um, and certainly, it's the, it's the same sort of thing as the allegation that the Russians um, um, hacked the DNC's and, um, emails and published them. Um, information the Democrats didn't want to come out that was embarrassing to them, truthful, came out before the election. I mean, that whole the, everything the Russians are accused of is what the media does to Republicans every election cycle. <laughs> All right, Ann Coulter, you're the best. I mean, I look at all the uh, young women coming up today. You have become a genre. Uh, I think you have created an entire generation of, uh, of commentators. Uh, it's always great talking to you. Thanks very much. I, I got to say, the thing I love most about Ann, aside from the fact that she is hotter than the hinges of hell because I'm a total sexist and a, and a sucker for a pretty face and she's just gorgeous. But, but aside from that, the thing I really love is she cuts nobody any slack. She will support you if she agrees with you. And she supported Trump because she feels that this, that the situation at the border is a crisis. She wrote an entire book about it, Adios America. And she has taunted him on Twitter every single day. Every single day, she taunts Trump on Twitter, saying, miles of wall built so far, zero. And she keeps putting out the same, same tweet. And she has gotten into cursing, four-letter word, you know, back and forths with him in the Oval Office. And she just holds his feet to the fire if, if he doesn't do the thing that he promised to do that was most important to her. And, you know, when she talks about the press, that he may actually destroy the press so we can reform it and get a more honest media in America, which we really do need, uh, she's right. That may be the most important thing he does.